Hello there science friends and welcome once again to Photoshop for the scientist. Thanks for watching. So in today's video we're going to be looking at how to create one of these 3D spinning heads using the MRI data that we've been working with for the past couple of videos. And to me this seems like the type of thing you'd see in a computer monitor in the background of like a Spider-Man movie or something. Um, of course the difference here is that we'll be using real data and you could do this to your own head if you had the DICOM files available. Um, but before we begin, I wanted to give a special shout out to the new Patreon subscribers that I got this week. Uh, it is very exciting for me to start seeing some action there. And whenever I get the email, I always tell everyone that happens to be within earshot that I got a new subscriber. And they seem mildly interested, but it is very exciting for me. And for those of you who don't know what Patreon is or if... Uh, you haven't thought about uh, subscribing yet, um, all you need to do is go over to patreon.com slash photoshop for the scientist and click the become a patron button and then from there uh, you can subscribe for as little as a dollar a video which for me is only about a dollar a month. Uh, of course you can go to different levels if you like but I encourage everyone to uh, maybe go over there and have a look and see what it's all about because believe me it is very exciting for me to get that email saying that I have a new subscriber. Uh, you could be number seven. <laughs> Anyways, back to the action here. So uh, let's minimize this and look into Photoshop. So I'm starting already with this 3D composite of uh, my MRI data, which I didn't want to go through that again since I covered it in my last video. So if you missed that, you might want to check it out. But if you might remember in the last video, I was saying that in the 3D panel here, which you can get to by going up to Window and choosing 3D, uh, we have a couple of different layers here and each one of them sort of has specific functions. So when we click Scene, and then when we click around and click and drag and look at the head here, what we're doing is spinning around the quote-unquote camera that's looking at this head. I'm just going to hit Control z to put it back to the uh, original position. And for the left me, I was trying to figure out how to create a spinning animation with the camera, but it wasn't working. And then finally I realized that if you click this layer here, which is the actual mesh of the head, um, this positions uh, our little, little axes here in the middle of the head and now uh, if we do the spin oops I'm not going the right way but we're spinning the head instead of the camera and this is kind of the secret to this whole technique so we can spin it kind of like by hand here just by clicking and dragging on the various axes although this is not the one I want to do I control Z again or we can have a little more control through the properties panel here so we can click the properties button or you can go up to windows and click properties here and then if we go into here under properties and then we want to click this little uh, I guess it's the coordinates button but it looks like a box with a little axis through it and we have fine control over how we want to rotate this head so we've got the X the Y and the Z axis so for example with the Y axis if I type in 90 degrees we've now got the head sort of facing me which you can see uh, in this other view here from the top the nose is now in the front so that's kind of where the uh, where we're going to be doing things. Um, but to actually create a GIF out of this, we want to use the timeline. Um, so we see there's a little uh, tab here that we can double click. Or you can go up to Window and say uh, ah, Timeline. Yeah, that makes sense. And you'll have this little box here. And we want to click Create Video Timeline. Normally, when I do animations, I'll use a frame uh, animation. But in this case, Timeline is what we want. And if you've ever used the timeline before in Photoshop, this should look familiar to you. If not, it's fairly similar, I think, in, in some ways to other video editing programs because we've got uh, our volume background here, which is the back black background layer. It's really just the layers that we have here. So we have the, the volume background here and then our actual 3D head up at the top here. Up along this uh, timeline here is how long our animation is actually going to take and by default it goes to 5 seconds but I'm going to take it down to 4 seconds because um, it kind of just works out nicely to do it that way with the four different positions of the head. Okay, so we've got our basic timeline set up and now we need to start positioning the head and creating keyframes um, at the various positions. So to do that, we're going to click the little drop down arrow here to open up all of our options. And then if you scroll down, and note, this always confuses me, but you can't use your scroll wheel over on this side. You have to scroll um, over the timeline here. But when we do that, we want to go down to 3D meshes and then twirl that open. And then we're going to click this little stopwatch beside 3D node. And this 3D meshes and uh, uh, whatever I just clicked here, the node, whatever I said. Uh, <laughs> that's where, This is how we're going to be controlling the position of the head. So you can see we've dropped a keyframe down here at uh, position 0 
And now I'm going to drag my cursor over to one second ish. One second, there we go. And I'm going to go into my properties panel. And just like I showed you before, I'm going to go into my Y axis and type in 90 degrees and hit enter. And you can see it automatically drops another little keyframe right there. So now we can do the same thing going up to two seconds. And I'll click on my coordinates button again. And this time I will type in 180 degrees. So now we can see the head is facing in the opposite direction. Once I hit enter on the numerical keypad, we'll see that keyframe gets dropped in. Now I'll go up to three seconds right here. And this one is always behaves a little weirdly. So you would think that if you put in 270, oh, it did work. OK. Well, last time I tried this, uh, for some reason, 270 didn't work. It just put it back to the uh, where we were at two seconds. But it does look like we have what we want here, which is nice. Uh, OK, so moving along, um, I will then scoot over to four seconds. And I will just type in uh, 359 degrees. So we've almost got gone all the way around. And I will hit Enter and drop that last keyframe. So if we now scrub back to the beginning here, we can hit play. And you can see we have a nice rotating head here. And hopefully everything works. Yep, working perfectly. Great. And once it sort of renders the first time, then it goes a lot smoother the second time. And I think that's looking great. So now we want to turn this into an animated GIF. Uh, so I'll hit stop. And this is done the exact same way that we do any other animated GIF. So we'll go up to File and we'll say export and we want to say save for web uh, here you want to make sure that gif is selected uh, it's going to just take a second to um, render this out it went really quickly for me earlier today but it seems to be very slow right now so i might just kind of cut to when it's finished because this looks like it could take a while Okay, so that took a lot longer than I thought it would, although uh, it went really quickly near the end. But anyways, here it is. So we want to make sure GIF is selected. And uh, I'm going to go down to Looping Options, and I want to make sure that this is set from once to forever. And now we can click the little play sign. Oh, what has happened here? That's not what we want. So I'm going to click Stop. And I'm going to pause again and try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> All right, well, that was a very tedious half hour of troubleshooting here, but I think I found the problem, and it's a memory issue. So just if you happen to run into the same types of issues on your computer, I found I could fix things up a little bit by going to Edit and Preferences down at the bottom here, and then going up to Performance. And I cranked up uh, my memory usage here from, it was around 500 before, maybe around, yeah, I think I was at the ideal range of 50, 65. Anyways, I just cranked that all the way up. Um, and then uh, hit OK. And now when I go up to File um, and say Export Save for Web, um, this does seem to happen a lot quicker now, so that's nice. At least, there we go. And now, as I said, I'm going to change this from once to forever, and I'm going to click Play. And I do get this little kind of weird nonsense at the top, which didn't happen the first time I did this, but it's a lot better than before. And then I'll just hit Save. And I'll call this Spinning Head 2, why not? And now, uh, let's see if I can load this up here. So now we can see we have our spinny head with this weird little uh, lampshade on the top, which seem to be rotating in opposite direction, or are they? I don't know. You can kind of convince your brain that this is rotating in both directions. Oh, yep, there it is. Anyways, close that off. So uh, with that said, I think that's all for today, folks. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below, and I will get to, to them as best that I can. And again, uh, check out that Patreon feed. Uh, you never know what you might find there. All right. Well, that's all for today, folks. I will see you all next time.